Lola, thank you very much for inviting us all. And I'm looking forward to hearing the three papers we have in this, uh, in this panel. Um, as Lola mentioned, we are going to go from uh, Prague to Brazil, to the south of uh, America, American cities. Um, so quite a dense uh, program for, for this afternoon. Um, as uh, Lola already said, um, well, we are, we are all learning from Zoom, and believe it or believe it or not, I've been uh, I've managed to avoid uh, all these uh, Zoom talks. I mean, I haven't spent my whole lockdown uh, on online, so uh, I'm going to learn as well uh, Zoom uh, tools, and I'm going to make uh, my best so that I don't miss any questions, and hopefully. Uh, um, yeah, we will be able to have a um, fruitful discussion across the uh, four uh, uh, discussants and the three papers. So let's start straight, uh, uh, straight away um, as a reminder as well for the, 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 the people presenting to stick to the 20 minutes so that we have time for exchange discussions. So we will have 20 minutes per paper and then 10 minutes for Q&A uh, as, we, as we follow up. We will start therefore with uh, the first paper, Heimat's Music in Prague, uh, Rural Nostalgia in the Capital. Um, a few biographical elements on the two authors of this paper and uh, it's gonna be presented by Andre Daniel. Uh, and this paper is co-authored with Jakob Macek, who's also uh, uh, going to be participating to the Q&A. So they are both here today, but Andre is going to be the one presenting. Andre and his PhD from the Institute of World History uh, at the Charles University's Faculty of Arts uh, in Prague, um, with a dissertation that he published on rock and turbofolk, the Im imagination of migrants from the former Yugoslavia. So that was published in 2013. And he went on to uh, uh, um, study uh, civil works on structures and violence in the construction of post-socialist mainstream church culture and DIY subcultural practices. He looks currently at topics at the intersection of class and xenophobia in church society. Um, and Jakub Maček lectures in the Department of Media Studies at the Metropolitan University in Prague. He's also a research fellow at Charles University, uh, 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 same city in Prague as well, and he received his PhD in social history in 2012. His research cover, uh, covers Czech popular culture from the late 19th century throughout the socialist period to today. He's the author uh, of, a, of a monograph published in 2017 uh, titled The Emergence of Popular Culture in the Czech Lands. Um, so, over to you, Andre, and we're looking forward to your presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Justinian. Thank you for thank you for the introduction, Lola. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us to the conference. Uh, it's a great bunch of papers that we are taking part in, and uh, I would like to actually uh, maybe just link our paper uh, with uh, with several uh, things that I said before. Um, so basically, I'll try to open the presentation, so I, I hope you see it right now. And uh, it's uh, basically the link uh, with uh, what was said before is uh, that with uh, what Lola said about, um, let's say, the musical mapping of uh, the reactionary uh, musics in the, in the case of Paris. So in our case, it is somehow not really evident which, uh, which part of uh, either reaction or revolution our music stands in, because sometimes it's, it's not, not uh, it's on the both sides maybe, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we'll try to link it somehow on, uh, on to also to Anita uh, presentation yesterday about the rural and the urban in the, in the Japanese popular music. As, uh, as Justinian said, uh, we are uh, from two different universities, we are linked together with Jakub in a, a non-profit organization, which is uh, our common building interest, the Center for the Study of Popular Culture, uh, which is more than a decade, actually, of, uh, of uh, our activities that we are um, basically organizing in Prague, conferences, uh, alternative city walks, university classes, etc. Lately, um, we were quite happy to receive a funding finally for our activities through the, through the um, Czech uh, Basic Research uh, Foundation, so the Czech Science Foundation project uh, 
which is basically linking uh, uh, our interests with that those of uh, musical sociology. And we are um, investigating, as you can say correctly, uh, of issues of class and, and uh, the, the music. As, uh, as was already said, uh, we are kind of interested in this. Um, we, we say we, we, we are calling it folk style music, but it's not folk music either. It's not folklore. It is something like folksy music. Uh, so just to give you some, some, uh, some ideas, uh, as um, was mentioned, so my dissertation treated actually the, the case of the former Yugoslavia. In uh, those uh, countries of the former Yugoslavia, they call it the newly composed uh, folk music. So this is something like fake folklore or the modern folklore or or uh, which which they use the, the short version for, for all these words, which is called turbo folk. Yeah. Uh, so finally in the 1990s, we've uh, discovered such musical genres more or less all over uh, the former socialist bloc uh, in Poland. We had the disco polo in uh, Yugoslavia, as you said, or from countries of former Yugoslavia, turbo folk. In uh, Bulgaria, Chalga, uh, in Romania, Manele, and so on and so forth. But it's not only the, the case of the, of the former socialist bloc, but we can see also some links with uh, that of popular music in, uh, in the um, southern um, parts of Germany or in Austria. And this is why we decided to get the, yeah, the, the name of the Heimat music, so something which is like Heimish or you know, homely coziness uh, feelings, which are, which are communicated through this uh, folksy or folk style music. Um, in this uh, very paper, uh, I, there, there are basically two parts, so the one historical and the one um, contemporary, so I'm more or less responsible uh, which is linked to the, you can say, urban ethnography of uh, the contemporary um, say mutations of, of a neighborhood where I live. Uh, it's uh, Prague 7, so I'll show you a little bit later on the map. And uh, yeah, to call it urban ethnography is maybe quite kind of a pretentious or a big word, but it's uh, basically, uh, I'm walking outside from the streets. I have a, two small kids and so during the day I'm walking with them and in the, in the, in the evenings I'm walking, with, walking outside with other fathers trying to have beer somewhere, yeah? So this is basically what I would call flaner or something like uh, this, this kind of not very formal research in the urban ethnography, but uh, I'm staying in the same neighborhood for some maybe 10 years now, and uh, I can see it um, in, a, yeah, in, in a perspective, in a historical perspective, it's, it's pretty much changing. So we have, um, with, with another colleague of mine, we have published uh, a research on uh, hipsters and how, how, is, uh, how is the neighborhood, uh, let's say, undergoing gentrification. And I will try to link it uh, with, uh, with uh, with uh, the research of Jakub, uh, which is the end of the 19th uh, century, since uh, folk music development. So basically, this is this is how Prague 7 looks like. So these are these uh, creamy Belle Epoque buildings, which are currently refurbished, refurbished. So which everything is uh, at least until the last economical crisis, everything was you know going very well, and uh, the prices uh, of the rental and of the of the the property ownership almost doubled and everything was this kind of uh, paradise going on, uh, paradise in, in the brackets, yeah. And uh, there was, on the local level, there were so many, uh, so many activities of, uh, of, the local, of the local municipality trying to create kind of a community that brings together uh, by creating these social events in the, in the yeah, in the urban space uh, by these uh, collective gatherings, uh, uh, eating outside, and so on and so forth. Uh, there was one thing which I discovered uh, in um, one of these like uh, wandering arounds uh, of the hanging arounds of the, of the neighborhood uh, with one of my one of my friends in one evenings. And I will try to share um, another thing with you. So uh, now I will do check with, I will stop sharing this presentation. I will try to share something else, which hopefully you will see. So I, we've discovered this. <laughs> Uh, it is, 
it should be something uh, which uh, is completely inappropriate to see in uh, in such you know refurbished gentrified neighborhood. It is uh, basically a, something like a party which is very uh, low bro or uh, you know, difference to high bro. So it's uh, something like a very popular music uh, for the base, which is very vital, uh, full of energy, joyful, celebrating, you know, enjoying life and so on and so forth. But it is, uh, it can be maybe linked much more to the Schlager or to, to something which is like a mix of, uh, of a folk, uh, folksy music with another topics like country, pop, uh, folk and so on and so forth. So I try to investigate a little bit more who were the inter interprets, you know, doing such, such a beautiful, uh, beautiful event. And I found out that it's, uh, it's basically a Prague-based trio which uh, is focusing on the dance parties for older and lower income audience, which somehow uh, manage uh, to um, communicate, you know, such a beautiful joy of life, even in the, in the, in the period of uh, like complete uh, refurbishing of the, of, the, of, the, of the neighborhood, of the quarter that's completely changing and so on. So it is, it is uh, something like the second side or the, the opposite of, of the, of the, um, of, uh, what I what I try to show here, yes, yeah? so with of, of these new uh, elites uh, that that uh, look uh, somehow you know beautiful. They have all all forms of capital possible, but there is also something like this going on. And we try to investigate it. Like, where does such music come from? And uh, um, I uh, try to link it uh, somehow with the locality of where is it where is it exactly based in Prague. So it's it's quite central place, but it is uh, across the river on the hill, so it's some, somehow isolated, but not so much isolated, but still in the, in the very center. And uh, we try to focus also on the restaurant and on the bar, where, it's, uh, where, it's, uh, where, the, where the venue uh, took place, uh, which is something like an oasis uh, or uh, an island, yeah, of, of, the older, of the culture for the older and uh, low income uh, social, social strata. So it's something like yeah, one of the remnants the older uh, of the older times as it as it did before before these changes so this is you can see inside how does it uh, look very well it's a very hospitable place but some somehow during uh, during these 10 years uh, I, I frequented it it completely changed and it uh, started to be more hostile there's a lot of stress in this neighborhood going on with uh, as you can see on the, on the, on the slide there is the last uh, flats uh, there is a stress also for the older people trying to uh, you know, sell their flats as, uh, for as much money as possible. Uh, there are the newcomers coming in uh, the, with completely different social, social background. And uh, um, it creates a somehow, somehow stress in the neighborhood, which uh, the only winners are basically only the real estate agents and uh, not, not even the people who move in. So we try to, we try to understand uh, what, how, can this, how can this relate uh, how can this kind of music relate and musical performances, how can they relate uh, with the topic of, uh, of the conference? And also like uh, we feel that there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of nostalgia in it. So we try to, try to link it or investigate it with uh, Svetlana Boim's uh, reflexive nostalgia and restaurative nostalgia, because even this through the, through the performances, the nostalgia is somehow materialized. And again, putting it back to the some kind of dialectical uh, dialectical uh, way of, uh, of of thinking. So we could we could, could it could, could it consider it as a soundtrack to surrender and escapism of a uh, of those people who are left uh, from you know this this winning part of the gentrification, or is it a sound of soundtrack of the of the cultural empowerment of the city as it is, as it is somehow um, yeah uh, labeled labeled in the media. And what we offer uh, is not, not, not one, neither the other, so it's more a kind of a historical um, approach or the processual approach, processual understanding of the phenomena. And uh, we try to, try to uh, also link it somehow with, uh, with uh, the cultural transfer, as we said, from, uh, from uh, Germany uh, or southern parts of the Germany, putting, uh, you know, this Heimat music together with, with all this, uh, let's say, cozy home, Feelings communicated through the through the through the literature, through the movies, and through the, through the music. So it's uh, it is pretty much the same for us. It's not the only only. Uh, so the music is a part of the of the wider cultural reservoir uh, we consider, and uh, there is a like material culture, gastronomy, and also some some parts of um, 
nějaké erotika, čo by třeba somehow uh, not, uh, not say, considered as uncomplicated and with, with a strong contradiction for, uh, for the, you know, this, this uh, new strata that we consider, uh, uh, let's say, more uh, um, self-restrained, civilized or uh, um, much more urban pool. So this is just to give an, give an idea what kind of people and what kind of music should be or could be much more appropriate in, in this kind of neighborhood as, as it sees itself. And uh, the, the one, uh, the video clip I wanted to show you before is, is what it is exactly. Yeah? So uh, we try to find out uh, at the beginning, like since the historical, historical introduction of such music, the brass band music and the folksy music. So we, here we could uh, also follow up on the yesterday's presentation in Beirut because uh, actually the military brass bands were introduced uh, from the Ottoman armies to the, to the Austro-Hungarian uh, the Habsburg uh, Empire. So this is how we how we got actually the message from yeah from the from the from the uh, Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, and uh, um, actually in the Czech case it, it was uh, enriched by the uh, local rural and then also urban folklore, and it's it's it has uh, become a music which is typical for um, what we call it what we could call peasant urbanites, so the newcomers to the city, the people who um, left uh, somehow something uh, in, the, in, the, in the countryside and they are bringing something with them from the countryside uh, to, the, to the city, so the people neither here, neither there. And we have to imagine that uh, it is uh, somehow during the 20th century, it was uh, one half of the population uh, which uh, was born elsewhere. So you could imagine like uh, all, at least three quarters of the population of Prague had some relatives in the countryside and had some, some kind of uh, relation or experience from the countryside. The music played a uh, unifying function because everybody knew it and it could, it could like a, be a bridge, a cultural bridge between, between different social strata. And also, as I was uh, speaking about this eclectic style, it managed to uh, incomp incorporate different uh, styles and genres such as uh, polka, valet, tango, jazz, etc. What is quite strange is that the message got back to the countryside, not back, but it got to the countryside and it was spread there and in the 20th century it became a synonymous to the countryside because it took over the, uh, took over the traditional folklore and um, uh, became, um, yeah, became, became synonymous for, for that. We could see that since 1960s, such music was more or less in defense because uh, there was yeah, the big uh, rise of the popularity of uh, rock or even Western pop music. And uh, the music was considered as nostalgic music for the older generations. Uh, and some of the authors actually reacted on that, even by, by, the, by the lyrics of the music, saying, stay with us, uh, check music, because we're nice, because we want to stay with you, and so on and so forth. So there was, there was one part of the nostalgia which was consciously already uh, yeah, incorporated into the, into the lyrics in the 1960s. In the 1970s and 80s, uh, in the late state socialism, uh, it, which was in the case of Czechoslovakia, a very kind of conservative regime, it, the, this kind of music was uh, taken as an official one, not official, but it was much more, uh, much more propagated, promulgated uh, uh, through, through the official channels. And there was an official official TV show um, going for 16 years in the 70s and 80s. Everybody knew it, so I can give you just some pictures because I'm running a bit out of time as, as far as I can see. And uh, it was one another venue also, like in the smallest outskirts of Prague, which was which was very important. You can see you can see people being very joyful and enjoying enjoying their life, similarly to those that we had witnessed with the colleague of mine a couple of years ago. And uh, in the in the so there are there are basically two levels of nostalgia uh, in uh, these older uh, parts yeah, of high map music. One is one is about the reality and the different geographic indications. So there is a lot of uh, references to the to the to the place outside of Prague because they have nothing to do with Prague. It's uh, usually southern Bohemia, Moravia, or some other uh, rural house case, or the specific atmosphere of the countryside that is bringing this idea of coziness. And also some kinds, some kinds of um, erotica, we can say. So we can see beautiful nights behind the village, lovesick, and so on and so forth. So these, uh, these uh, elements are also communicated. 
In the 1990s, there was a sharp uh, decline in popularity. So you can see Václav uh, Havel, our first uh, democratic president after the 1989 1990 changes with uh, Mick Jagger. So he was everything uh, but uh, folksy, folksy type. Uh, so, and especially in the 1990s, there was a strong, let's say, backlash of the, of the media against such music, which was considered backward and, you know, uncool and uh, non-West. And uh, it was also a matter of uh, positioning oneself against such music of, you know, taking, taking parts of the West and so on and so forth. But uh, as uh, there are these periods in, the, in, in, uh, in uh, many histories uh, going up and down, so in the late 19, uh, the late 2000s, actually this music came back again. And um, which uh, maybe had its, and it's our hypothesis also had its, uh, um, reasons in uh, uh, this, let's say, post-socialist uh, transition that never went uh, completely okay for, for everybody. So some uh, parts of the, those people felt marginalized, uh, if, like turned, sorry, I want to say, uh, put their um, uh, love for such music much, much more in front of us saying, uh, yes, but this is something typically Czech we want to preserve, and this is a rejecting cultural uh, or the global culture return to the, to the domestic cultures through uh, such cultural practices and uh, we could see that uh, there is a completely new rise of, uh, of this uh, it's a contemporary uh, revival of, of this policy music so you can already see uh, groups like progress i'm asking myself what is so progressive about that but it's, it's progress and the other duo yamaha which are already inc incorporating let's say contemporary musical instruments such as such as the, the you know electronic keyboards uh, and uh, basically are on the margins of rock. So I'm going into the conclusion, we could uh, find out, uh, so one, one of our question could be if there would be, uh, if, uh, you know, we uh, abandon these this topics of, uh, of musical sociology and we try to think about, uh, about uh, let's say, new wealthy strata, not so much in this Bourdieu tradition in habitus, but uh, more as cultural omnivores. So can they really integrate such music? And we, we say probably not yet. They are not, not really, they are not really um, prepared for doing that. This, uh, this kind of folksy music is considered something as completely incompatible with, uh, uh, with, so with this liberal urban strata. So maybe there can be some kind of ironic uh, parties as we can see here on the picture. But it's not uh, it's not yet uh, ready for the moment to really take it and to colonize it through, through the cultural practices. So we can see uh, two different uh, levels and regimes of nostalgia, and I'll try to be very brief because I can see Justine is already like it's, it's, it's enough. So we can see uh, one uh, one part of, of inner or this textual nostalgia going to this let's say nationalist or I'm not even necessarily nationalist but patriotical traditions. Uh, which uh, have this, you know, uh, relation to the, to the home, to the nation, and they idealize, idealize the, the countryside. The, the other one is, uh, let's say, conscious or unconscious uh, thinking about um, uh, revisiting the music of, uh, of the younger, of the older generation one, once they were young. So it's, they get them back to this 1970s, 19, 1980s when this music was popular. And the, the other one could be this outer contextual nostalgia, which could serve as a defense mechanism against this new, let's say, culture of the Allied strata. So it could be uh, against those beautiful looking people in the, uh, the, uh, having their expensive dinners outside in the streets uh, and it can serve as a political mobilization to finish uh, with uh, all these meanings we were discussing here earlier. Thanks a lot, Justinian. Thank you, Andre and Jakob, as well, for uh, putting together this paper. And a reminder to our uh, attendees that uh, Jakob is also here to answer uh, questions. So we have several questions on the chat, and I have several myself. Uh, so we have Daniel Richter, John van der Vert, and Anita Drexler, um, and Lola as well, adding a question. Um, I'll try to synthesize some of the questions, especially John, Anita, and one of my own. Um, is it is there is there some form of uh, instrumentalization from uh, political powers uh, of high math music, especially is it used as a way um, to celebrate some form of um, reactionary nostalgia of socialist uh, times, and is it something that is 
being pro uh, yeah, is it something that is being put forward uh, by either local or national powers uh, as a way to celebrate, you know, the times gone by, you know, the very the golden the golden days of uh, socialism. Yes. Uh, so I think there's still not so much uh, attempts to uh, capitalize this kind of uh, nostalgia because this music is connected to the musical past, which is seen uh, too much, uh, I would say it like low class, too much rural parts. So still this music is in most of the population, which is seen in the mainstream media as something really bad, you know. So still we have lots of uh, listeners to this music, but they are not active in the media, I would say. So they are their own media, uh, looking for this uh, more uh, like people from the rural side, on, as we seen also from the uh, urban side. But uh, there were some attempts to capitalize it, but it doesn't uh, work because it's seen something like not today, something like really going to the past, which no one wants to somehow uh, build it again, I think. Andre, do you want to add as well, follow up on this one? I agree, actually, but uh, I would. Uh, there was there was one uh, important level that uh, remained maybe unanswered, which was this uh, post socialist nostalgia. So could we could we speak about nostalgia in a way? And I don't think we can because it's more. Um, there there is a definitely a reactionary element, but it's not so much longing for socialism either. So it is more longing for some, you know. For, for the home, for something which is outside of the city, something which is simple, but it's not necessarily state socialism. And is it, again, I'm trying to synthesize the, the questions we received, so I'm, I'm, I, I, I hope I'm, I'm successful at this and I apologize if I'm not. Also, uh, for, the, the, for you, Andre, Jacob, and everyone presenting, feel free to reread the questions in the chat later on when you're cool down and you might have interesting stuff to follow up on uh, later on. Um, a question on, on the issue of uh, gentrification and you've mentioned that in your in your paper and how does that act, um, how does it relate to gentrification? Do you, do you identify the comeback of Hyde Might, um, comeback or emergence of Hyde Might music as a protest against gentrification? And another question for me as well is, is there, you mentioned how there's been an appropriation as an ironic form of uh, Heimat music uh, recently. Is there something like um, a glorification of Heimat music by more kind of uh, the cool kids of, of Prague 7, if I want to put it that way, in a very informal way? Uh, and I'm saying that because, for instance, when you look at Paris, you've got a, a comeback of, of popular balls and, uh, and uh, musette and that kind of very popular, more like 19th century, early 20th century forms of entertainment in, linked to dance and music. And there's a reappropriation of this uh, by what could be qualified as frontifiers. So I'm wondering if that's the case as well. So first question is, is it a form of protest? And second question is, is there some form of glorification, which is not ironic, which is actually enjoying that kind of, 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 of music? Go on, Jakub, if you want. No, I think it's important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so it's my, it's my, my thing. So first thing, if, uh, if uh, there is a... So I'll start from the back, actually. If, uh, in, in, uh, if we can see in, in the contemporary Prague 7, like other than non-ironic uh, appropriations of such music, I don't think so, actually. Because it's, uh, as, uh, it's something so, so special and something so... Maybe not yet. It, we are not at that, po at that moment yet. Uh, it can it can be uh, that there are some, several cultural practices, let's say, linked with the countryside, which are somehow uh, being put forward as cultural practices for the cool kids, as you said it. But it's, this this is not not the case yet. So it's something which is still uh, too much odd, too much left out, too much uh, uh, extreme and exotic. And uh, the first question. Uh, coming back to it is uh, it can be somehow I, I think according to me so it's somehow mobile uh, it can be used as a as a political mobilization because you can see for example there are some parties political parties uh, which uh, mm, okay they use anything they they can especially we have these new populist parties uh, not only in the in the central eastern europe but all over all over europe in this moment they're using anything they could attract uh, they could so these are the real omnivores 
and they can use this also this this these this feelings uh, of uh, coziness of the home and so on to mobilize some part of their electorate but they can mix it also with rock they can mix it also with country and with several other uh, other musical styles so not necessarily not uniquely but there is there is such level I would say. thank you Jakub do you want to add anything no 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 <laughs> and I think, uh, and I think Andre's uh, uh, answer also answers uh, uh, Lola's question on uh, on political party. Um, I think we are. I think there might be time for one extra question. We have a couple of minutes. Um, I'm trying to read them and then understand them and then synthesize them as I read them. Um, so Paola asks, I'm going to just read it out loud, is there a link or an influence of this music on the cinema production in Prague? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, as well, uh, as I said already, there's still, you know, this music is related to the, this, all this generation. It's but, uh, usually not the part the film production is uh, prepared for. So this is somehow really, like, really connected to the the poorest people, the mostly rural people, you know, this kind of strata, which is all, all of mainstream media. It's, these people are not, in fact, in, on mainstream media. Just maybe there are some elections or there are people looking, uh, for the people from media looking for them, but otherwise they are already forgotten, totally forgotten, I would say. Um, Andre, do you want to add anything as a conclusion, concluding words? Um, thanks a lot, actually. I, as I'm going through the questions also in the chat, I think we more or less uh, reply to everything. The only thing, if uh, I, which I see, and I have to think it over, about uh, the relation, could one construe Hamad music and nostalgia for the past as a real world vaporwave music? So I have to think it over, and I'll try to <laughs> reply to the, to the person who asked. <laughs> Please do, please do that. That's the, actually the, the great addition of those chats is that we can keep track of them and actually follow up on them because uh, we often say we will, but um, in the end conference, we forget the questions and, and move on, which is perfectly fine. But here, please feel free to download the chat and follow up uh, with the, 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 those of our colleagues asking questions. Thank you very much, uh, Jakub and Andre, uh, for, those, um, uh, for this paper and for answering our, our questions.